welcome. This week we speak to uranium miner Oak Bay Resources and Energy, which listed on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange just last week and quickly saw its shares being snapped up, valuing it as one of the top miners on the bourse. I'm Nozi Pumbandra and this is Resource Watch. <music> Let's kick off with the market wrap for this week. Oil dropped below $70 a barrel and there's a growing likelihood that it could trade lower or remain near these prices for a while. This after the organization of petroleum exporting countries OPEC decided not to act to force a reduction in the worldwide supply of crude oil. The World Platinum Investment Council says the supply deficit in the platinum market will widen in 2014. It's the third time in succession that demand exceeded refined platinum supply and is largely due to lower supply from South African producers who've endured a five-and-a-half-month strike over wages. Brazilian mining giant and the world's largest iron ore producer Vale says it plans to cut investments by nearly a third next year. The drop marks the fourth straight year of cutbacks for the company amid third-quarter losses and growing worries about spiraling iron ore prices. South African mining firms Sibanya Gold and Northern Platinum are reportedly among a group of 10 companies interested in Anglo-American Platinum's union mine in Rustenburg. Anglo kicked off the sale process for the union mine and concentrator in October as part of its attempt to shift away from old, deep, labor-intensive mines to newer, more mechanized mines. Oakway Resources and Energy, which owns the only dedicated uranium mine in South Africa, debuted on the JC last Friday. Oakway Shiva Uranium Mine boasts the largest uranium ore body in South Africa and one of the top five in the world. Oakway is owned by the Gupta family, known for their strong political ties. I spoke to Oakway CEO George van der Marwe shortly after their listing. <music> Thank you so much for making the time to talk to us. Uh, let's talk about your recent listing. Uh, about the timing, why decide to go to the stock market now? You know, I think the, the fundamentals of uranium are right right now. Um, you see with the proliferation agreement that has ended uh, last year, uh, there is a very large supply and demand gap uh, in uranium itself. So uh, I think that we have done a lot of the studies, completed the studies, and as a company we are now ready that we can go to the market and, uh, and ha make our stock available. Why are you bullish about uh, future demand? I mean there's been uh, naysayers that say that the production side of uranium mining can be quite costly. Why are you so bullish on the investment case? It's just merely a demand and supply. You know, you're sitting with a, a demand of today 190 million pounds and a supply of about 160 million pounds. Uh, and, you know, in 2020, you, a demand of 265 million pounds. These are the givens that you're sitting with, you know. So you can see previously there was other things that used to make up the, the shortfall, uh, the secondary uranium supply and, of course, the proliferation agreement. But these are all gone. And, and hence we feel that today, the uh, you know, it is right for us now and, and the climate is right for, for investing in uranium. Put South Africa in context for us in terms of how big we are as a uranium player on the global market. No, no, we're very small. I think that uh, we must supply about 2 or 3% of the world uranium. We're quite small uh, in that regard. And we've seen a lot of volatility, George, in terms of commodity prices across the board. Uh, give us some insight in terms of how the uranium price has been behaving. And I'm quite certain you're bullish that the price is going to firm up given this uh, move that you've just made. I mean, just as we were discussing now, I mean, uh, Uranium is the only commodity that has in the last one month almost doubled in price. Um, so I can see that you know, right now the people are starting to realize the, the shortage that is on the way. And the shortage hasn't come yet, but the shortage with, will hit in another six months or so and the price of uranium will, 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 will skyrocket. So uh, as a commodity, it is not a commodity that is normally based on, on, on world parameters. It is a lot more, I would call it an emotional product. Um, 
that are market sentiment uh, sensitive rather than uh, world dom uh, dominatrix uh, sensitive. And of course it's the first for the Johannesburg Stock Exchange to have a uranium player listed but the journey to listing couldn't have been easy. There's been a lot of uh, raised eyebrows around the involvement of the Gupta family in this particular uh, company. Talk to us about uh, some of the negativity that you've maybe come across and what response you've had to that? I must be telling you it's been actually quite wonderful. We haven't really had any negative response uh, in the public about it. Um, I think this is a wonderful platform for, for the family. Of course, I'm not a spokesperson of the family, so I cannot really speak on their behalf. However, uh, I'm the CEO of uh, Oak Bay, and I think that they really shed the opportunity now, uh, you know, for all the allegations that have been made. I mean, you know, we must understand, being a listed company, you're governed by the JSC, you're governed by King 3, uh, we are a listed company, which means that we are signed off by KPMG. Uh, so all the right corporate governance practices are in place. So I think that now any of the rumors that there are would be easily dispelled and people would have a much clearer view of really what's happening in the business. So, uh, you know, all the allegations will just remain what they are, allegations, and people are actually able to see these negative allegations for, for what they are. I'm quite certain though that many are also going to be looking to see whether Oak Bay is going to be putting in uh, bids for some of the, the work that's coming through uh, South Africa vision around nuclear in particular. Are you going to be uh, bidding in that space? You know, I must compliment my shareholders that if in 2010, when he bought this mine, they already knew that South Africa was going to move to a nuclear future, they have really great vision. But, uh, and for that, I mean, and that's one of the reasons why we're listing. Yeah. People don't know about uranium and people don't know the timelines on uranium. So the Africa's vision of uranium will realize in 10 years time. Uh, you know, it is not something that's going to realize immediately. So. Um, the shortage of uranium is now. Uh, the amount that we can supply, we can tie up maybe two or three power stations at most. And uh, when we start going to market with a product, we'll be tied up to supply long-term uh, uh, agreements long before South Africa's uh, uranium has even realized. Mm. So certainly uh, South Africa's integrated resource plan must form part of your growth ambitions as well as other markets. You know, that's the nice thing of being about a uranium player today. I mean, the spectrum is so great. Um, you know, the demand is at 190 million pounds. The supply is at 140 million pounds or 160 million pounds. I mean, there's a huge gap. You know, today we can almost pick where we want to go. Do we want to sell to, to China or to anybody? I mean, the, the, the demand is so great. So, of course. What it does is it helps um, uh, for us to, to build a better, better case scenario to say that, of course, in another 10 years' time, you know, there will be even a larger uh, deficit uh, of the supply of uranium. Let's talk about the gold side of the business. Uh, a very tough industry overall. Uh, we've been seeing a, a, a trend of uh, disinvestment in particular around the gold space in South Africa. Uh, what is your sense in terms of the investment case for gold right now? Yeah, it is a volatile market. Um, I think that internationally, uh, you know, with uh, the U.S. Uh, removing its interest rate hikes, I think that uh, this has helped uh, taken away confidence from from the gold price itself. But it's a product that rebounds and it comes and goes up. So uh, we still have a very uh, we still very bullish about gold. Gold will always be a platform, and uh, I'm very sure that it would maybe not reach the levels of 1,600, but 1,450 is really. Uh, something that can be realized in the near future. And of course, uh, just uh, the general investment landscape in South Africa, there's been lots of uh, criticism from international quarters around our labor situation, our processes around exploration and licensing and the like. Uh, what's your experience been to date? You know, our, our chairman has a, has, a, has a very strong vision on labor and the way we have to handle labor. And I think that uh, that has percolated through to our company. Uh, we've been lucky. We haven't had a single uh, labor unrest in the four years that we've owned the company due to his vision. Um, so I must say for myself, I've not experienced that. Um, and then if you, you know, you talk about the other mines, of course, but I think that there's many ways of handling the situation and I think, I think the problem comes from both sides. I think uh, definitely some CEOs should maybe handle the situations different, but of course uh, uh, it's different when you're standing in their shoes. Mm. George, thank you so much for making the time to join us. Thank you very much. 
Our gem of the week is the metal uranium, exactly what it is and what are its uses. Uranium is a very heavy metal which can be used as a source of concentrated energy. Today, uranium is mostly used for its unique nuclear properties. When in sufficient concentration, uranium's many fissile isotopes can cause a nuclear chain reaction that generates heat in nuclear power reactors and produces the fissile material for nuclear weapons. It occurs in most rocks and in the Earth's crust as tin, tungsten and molybdenum. It also occurs in seawater. Uranium was apparently formed in supernovas about 6.6 billion years ago. Its slow radioactive decay provides the main source of heat inside the Earth. Due to its high density, uranium is used in the keels of yachts, as counterweights for aircraft control surfaces and for radiation shielding. Uranium has a melting point of 1,132 degrees Celsius. Well, that's it for this week's show. Do stay in touch talking to me on Twitter at Nuzi Pombandra and of course using our hashtag resource watch. Until next time, it's goodbye for now.